What if I told you that one guy felt so pushed by the government that he felt he had nowhere to turn? That in his, his only course of action was to build a tank and lay waste to the town he lived in. Yes, I've, you know this? I, I read this story. Seems reasonable. Build a tank? Build a tank. Yep. Okay. Granbury, Colorado. That absolutely makes sense because they're high. <laughs> <laughs> and more ways than one. <laughs> Lack of oxygen and what just, oxygen they get altitude. is weeded. Not just altitude. It's no. a town in a high basin of the Rocky Mountains. Oh, so double, double high, <laughs> triple yep. high. There you go. It has a population of around 2,000, but about tw- but it's about 20 miles from the Rocky Mountain National Park and 100 miles away from Denver. So that'll give you an idea of where it is. So four hours to get to Denver by tank. Right. Four okay. hours by tank. <laughs> Tourism is a draw to the area, but the townspeople think of it uh, of it as a less than a boutique uh, boutique town like Aspen, and more like a service town that, that has a couple of banks, a concrete plant, a few businesses that cater to the tourism. Is it? it's a it's a small town. Does concrete grow that high? Yes, it does. Okay, <laughs> it's high as an elephant's okay, eye. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, it has a good old boy element. Good, honest, hardworking people. Marvin Hemeyer. Owned a small muffler shop in in Granbury, Colorado. He made a living uh, repairing mufflers, and by all accounts, was a wizard at welding. Hmm. Wizard. You can be a wizard at anything. That's a thing you can be I a guess wizard so. at. So, uh, he did good work, which caused his business to to thrive, and the success allowed him to expand. In 1992, he bought two acres of land from a federal agency that was organized to handle the assets. Of a failed of failed savings and loans associations. So back in the eighties, a bunch of uh, uh, savings and loan banks failed, and they had a lot of just a lot of property and stuff they had to get rid of. And it took them years to get rid of all of this stuff. And so in ninety two, he they have some land in Granbury that he's going to buy. So he bought uh, two acres um, for forty two thousand dollars to build his muffler shop. Um, the problem was that the townsfolk built a new sewer line. That was around the muffler shot and not close to it. So it was going to cost him like $80,000 to hook into the sewer line. Which is more than what he paid for the land. Which is more than he paid mm-hmm. for the land. That is sky high pricing. Right. And so he... Uh, <laughs> look at you. <laughs> <laughs> he got jokes, people. <laughs> and so um, he wasn't willing to pay good a, g- a good deal of money to tie into the existing sewer sale. And this began his problem with the local government because you have to tie into sewer and water in this town or people get upset. It's like septic tanks or whatever. Right. Yeah, or, right. you know, a pit. Right. Like, don't go near Granberry's Pond. <laughs> right. It's a shithole. <laughs> <laughs> we call it a cray hole. <laughs> Let that gray water go fall into Ugh. it. <laughs> he might complained to the town council about... Uh, about other businesses and lashed out about had land out, uh, and and other business owners, anyone he felt he was taking was taking advantage of him, he lashed out about. So he's not making friends right. in this whole thing, which is odd. You think he wouldn't be so outspoken if he's literally a muffler guy, right? right. Like that's the quiet <laughs> right, things, and right. now he's like, no, fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, my no, job no, may he, be quieting things, but I'm gonna be loud. Yeah, well, he's quiet all the time. Yeah, yeah. He's got yeah. he's got to let loose. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta let that steam out. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying, my car once a week doesn't go. Man, my muffler's been working. Let me let out a belch. Right. <laughs> like you know, he's, no, he uh, he's so 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 he's not in the good old boy network. No, is he's what not. You're he's saying. Out. And the reason no. why he's out, he he moved. Um, the reason why he's in Cal- Colorado is that he was in he was in the military. Okay. And then after he got in the military, he said. This is kind of a nice place for. Uh, I, I want to. How old is he here in the nineties? Ah, uh, he's in his forties. Okay. He's okay. In, so, he's so, in his, so at a reasonable age, yeah. right? So he's our age. Yeah, definitely a reasonable age. Reasonable. <laughs> he's, he, he, yeah. yeah. I mean, he's in his forties. Yeah, we none of us lose prior, our mind for he, the littlest things of any more. Prior to no. this, he bought land <laughs> w- uh, with two cabins on it. He rents one cabin out. He stays in the other cabin. He he enjoys two things in life. He enjoys sitting in his hot tub. And looking out 
of uh, uh, onto his land. Mm-hmm. Mm. You know, it's, yeah, Sounds it's, reasonable. It's Peaceful. Cold. In Colorado, hot tubs are great. Yeah, there I'm you a big go. fan Perfect of hot tubs. Yeah. And then he also loves snowmobiling. Okay. And there was a group that called. They were called the Two Z Snowmobilers, and they would go every Tuesday. They would like. They would like. Um, you know, not work, and they'd go snowmobiling. So Colorado for mud and right, it. basically, right. basically yeah. what they were doing. But making enemies with the neighbors seems to be a theme for these type of stories you share. <laughs> yeah, right. Speaking of neighbors, uh, neighbors, Cody Dochev bought certified ready mix in 1972, which at the time only produced 5,000 yards of concrete a year, which is not bad, I guess. But over the years, much like Tommy is a smart businessman, he increased it to 40,000 yards. And changed the name to Mountain Park Concrete. NCP or NPC is a family affair with Cody's son Joe and his wife Susie helping out. They're the three owners. Um, business was good, and the family was looking to build a new batch plant. And they actually tried to buy the land Marvin bought at the 1992 auction, but lost out to Marvin. And so they bought the land next door, which is closer or further away from the sewer. Um, closer, okay, and then they and they had no problem going into the easement. They, they right, had, they had so, no. So my first thought is, why doesn't he just let them pay for it, and then he just runs a line to their place? That was an option. He kept refusing it. Okay, mm. there, he keeps. He probably couldn't get anything written in concrete, <laughs> so uh. he didn't want to, you know, take his chances. <laughs> so why lo- this is why we love you. Yeah. Of course, they needed more land, so they approached Marvin, and according to them. There was a handshake deal made for uh, to buy the Marvin's land for two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. That's a, not a bad turnaround. Yeah, he spent times. what you said forty two. Yeah, right. For two fifty, get to two fifty. Yeah. Mm, that's a pretty um, six times. Done. Yeah, uh, I could give live like a king in Mississippi for two hundred fifty thousand yep, dollars. That's true. Right. <laughs> Uh, but the, no snowmobile, but you could mudmobile. Right, right, you could, right. You could mudmobile. Mudmobile and crawfish. Let's go. That's all it is. Casinos. <laughs> Casinos. Turn that back into 40K. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Joe, Do- Joe Dochef, um, Cody's son, went to town, uh, the town council to get the ball rolling because, like, hey, we want to build this plant, which is great for the town. You know, more jobs, more business. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, but they had to get the area rezoned, and which they do. Uh, but while they're doing that, Marvin has ch- uh, changed the price to three hundred seventy-five thousand. He upped it mm, because he by said one hundred and twenty-five thousand. <laughs> but in his mind was it's like another fifty percent. Well, if you're going to get it rezoned, that makes my property vet more valuable. So you're going to have to pay for that value. Mm. So he went back on the handshake yeah. deal, right? Uh, and then Which. he decided to do it again, and they raised it to a million. Oh, so so paid forty-two. Yeah, wants to sell it for a million. So they were cool with the three seventy five or three twenty five or whatever. They almost were going to pay that, and then he, they, they were like, "Well, if we have to pay it, they're going to have to pay it." They were a successful business. And then he tried to do three hundred percent on then top he, of that. Then he added another zero. Yeah, <laughs> they're like, "Wait, hold up." <laughs> added um, a, uh, added a few more zeros. Yeah. <laughs> Let's add a zero before the decimal point. What's so, <laughs> so the Doge chefs bought land on the other side of, uh, and left Marvin alone because yeah. that's all I could they could do. Yeah, the town council went after him. Um, about the sewage line, and he said, "Well, the the concrete plant's not giving me an easement, and the concrete pan, plant's like, no, we're totally give you an easement. We will totally do that." And he's like, "No, they won't give me an easement." <laughs> 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 and so they fine him like a hundred dollars a day for basically having no sewer line. So, what is he oh, shitting he in at this it? point? So, so that's my question: Is has he developed this land at this point? No, he's he's got his muffler shop on it. Which okay, which he doesn't. He doesn't operate all the time because he's hot tubbing and has but, to poop but, at home. <laughs> well, yeah. So, so, like, is there just, I mean, I guess it's just welding. He's so got, there's no shitter there. Well, like. he's got, I'll, he's got, he, I mean, he's a creative guy. And from what I understand, he's got tanks built so that can, you know, you know that he can use a toilet and it goes, but it, it like, it's just like his own septic tank he's built. Okay. It's not, but, but so, 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 he's so he has a own. history of building tanks. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so he has his own system uh-huh. in place, his right. own systems in place. All right. Right. And the, the town's like, no, no, we, we have a thing. And, and he's like, oh, yeah, you're only, pick, you're only picking on me because I'm not one of you. I'm an outsider. And, you know. The, the town council, like, the oldest family has got members on right. it, and the, and the mayor's been there for a billion years, you know, that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And he's I mean, like, I kind of see his point, I, right? Yeah. So, like, if, if you own land and you want to be able to do something, like, I own property, and if you want to be able to do something, you have to ask somebody, can I do this to my property? And, and, and 
to an extent, I get it, right? Like, you know, if you're in this nice neighborhood, you don't want to put a trailer on it. You know, that kind of kills everyone else's property value. But, like, oh, well, I want to, you know, put this thing. Oh, well, no, you can't do that. Then why do I own this Dude, property? if I want to dig a hole 50 feet down and shit in it, right. I should be able to you on my own property. You paid $42,000 for that property. Like, that's yeah. your, that is my $42,000 shithole. Shit shit oh, right, exactly. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> so so I, I, I kind of get it. And then get you it. get it back to five feet below the surface. You fill it in. You dig another hole. And, 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 and you're yes. good for another 20 weeks. And I, and don't get I don't me wrong. know how long it takes I don't know how long it takes to fill a 50-hole foot hole of shit. Don't get me wrong. I understand when I get this land, they say we're they've... They've built the sewer line around your land, which kind of seems sh- shady because after you buy it. And then they're like, oh, yeah, it's to tie yeah. into it, it's going to cost $80,000. Oh, so it was after he, I guess yeah, I missed that. Yeah. After he bought the land, land, they did the. Yeah, they did the line oh, around, yeah. around his so, Yeah. So, so, so he's got. Okay. Gra- oh, wrong. yeah. He's got I rights. understand. Other than, other, than, other than the fact that he's hard headed for not just tying into the other people's. Thing. Right, right. right. And like, 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 other than that, I, I'm, I'm on this guy's and, side so and, far. And, yeah. I will, and, I, and I will say that. In the articles I read about this, I'm doing the research on this. It is a lot of, a lot of he said she said stuff. So he says that they wouldn't let him tie into an easement. They say we had no problem with that. Of course, we wanted him to do that. It's you know, and so maybe they're trying to charge him for it, or he didn't want yeah, to. Pay but for none it. of that I can. But it was like it's not 100 percent clear. Um, so Marvin. So it was uh, anything but an easement. It sounds like a difficult minute. Yeah, d- difficult yeah. minute. So, uh, so again, the Doge just bought the land on the other side and left Marvin alone. So Marvin took that as a slight, and over the next few years did his best to, the, to get the rezoning stopped. He tried every legal trick in the books, including calling the EPA to slow down the progress, but in the end the, the city changed the zoning and cleared a path for the concrete plant, c- plant's construction. Uh, the town also fined uh, Hemeyer for not having water sewer line. They charged him one hundred dollars for a day, and that he paid a month's worth. So he paid you know three grand or whatever it was, and he signed it to like the liars and cheaters of, of the town. That's what the note was. And then they sent him the check back because they said it wasn't clear that way. Mm-hmm. And so it, there was a whole thing about that, which is he's kind of my hero. <laughs> so far we're okay. <laughs> we're yeah. Ha- have you heard that story about the guy who like? Got fined something, and he like brought in pennies. Oh, right. yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, so I mean, you know, it's kind of like that, right? Here's, right. Here's, here's your check. Here's your, yeah. here. uh, he would eventually lease the lease, then finally sell the property to another realtor that owned a business called the Trash Company. When I looked up the Trash Company, they're an independent trash pickup company, and okay. so they used it to store their trucks in the winter because the winters suck in right. Colorado. So that's what, and as part of the agreement, he leased the portion of the land and built a metal shed on it, and this is where he would. Build his revenge. Build his revenge. The shed become a, his home. He had food, television, and a cot inside. But no bathroom. He had a bathroom, too, but I just didn't put it in there. Okay. Okay. He, uh, he spent the next six months to a year putting his wizard-like welding skills to use. He bought a Kumatsu D355A bulldozer from a, uh, an auction in Fresno and had it trailered in. <laughs> And that was like it's huge. It's a huge ass tra- uh, um, bulldozer, mm. and had it trailered in, and like it was, it was so big, it was a spectacle for the town <laughs> to see this thing coming in. Little did they know they were watching right. the demise. Right. <laughs> what is uh, that? Like, hold on. so I'm in the wrong business. If he's fixing mufflers and can buy this land, I mean, I know you said he got out of the service, right? But, but, but he had had some businesses outside. Okay, and it's not clear what those were, but he had some income coming from somewhere else. Okay, and so he was basically comfortably. He wasn't. I mean, he lived frugally, but right. he wasn't. You know, he built shit tanks, and, and so he did. <laughs> yeah. he did his mufflers. Like I think the muffler shop was his fun money. Okay, and uh, you know, he had other business to take care of, like everything else. So okay, he, you know, as long as I can pay my. It's just Snowmobile stuff. like talking it with just, our friend Bubba. I know how much tractors cost, right. let alone a bulldozer the size you're speaking. But he got, but apparently he got got the bulldozer at an auction and got it for a great price. Because he's thrifty. That's probably yeah. still two hundred k. Like oh, no, no, it wasn't. Uh, it wasn't that much. Okay, it's like used one, so it wasn't that much. So, uh, so he took a uh, uh, Katsumu uh, Ka- Komatsu. That's what it is. D three five five A. Bulldozer and armored it that with. That sounds like a droid. Right. Come on. I told you I was going to get Star Wars on this. And armored <laughs> it with one and a half inch thick steel plate that covered the cabin, the engine, 
and parts the track. One and a half inches. That's yeah. I mean, wow. like, like oh, regular. Oh, see, I know how big that is. I see it every heavy. day. What? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I, I'm not going. I'm not going to talk about man's shortcomings. So I'm, 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 I'm raising better now. And yet, you made a pun about it. Um, what did I? You said shortcomings. shortcomings. I know. Yeah. So, uh, in places, he had put steel plates that sandwiched concrete, making them the poor man's version of compo- uh, composite armor. So, please tell me. It was Mountain Concrete's company's concrete. <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> I did not find out out for okay. sure. Hey, uh, neighbor, <laughs> can I borrow like I don't know seven yards of? Con- I don't know why you measure concrete in yards. That's very weird to me. Uh, this made the vehicle. What's it for? It's a project. <laughs> <laughs> Just this, this fi- made finally building a shitter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this made the vehicle impervious to small arms fire and resistant to explosions. <laughs> Ceramite. He made ceramite, which is a 40K reference. So. Marvin put in bullet pool, bulletproof plexiglass windows to protect it, the slots he used to look outside. He installed uh, a closed-circuit cameras, uh, five of them outside the vehicle, with the video monitors on the inside. Uh, the cameras were protected by bulletproof Lexan and had compressed air nozzles that would blow dust away from the camera lens. Can we pause Dang. for just a second? Yeah. When the zombie apocalypse happens, <laughs> I want this dude. Wow, we yeah. just wanted Bubba's. <laughs> Bubba <laughs> makes that in Bubba makes my, that. Bubba makes that in like two days. <laughs> and he's got peanuts. <laughs> and he and he's got peanuts. Uh, it had onboard fans and an AC to keep him cool. He he, he had um, made three gun ports, one for a fifty caliber rifle, uh, one for a, a three hundred eight semi automatic rifle, and a twenty two long range r- rifle. Oh, this thing's missing a flamethrower. Word. <laughs> Once inside, he had no intentions of getting out. Did he Don't have you? a fridge? Yeah, he had food. Okay. He had, he had, he had, <laughs> he had yeah. fatties. <laughs> like, no, it's just, it's it's like, <laughs> Give it up. it's like seven shells of Vienna sausages. <laughs> <laughs> it's all spam. Yeah, it's all spam. <laughs> On June 4th, 2004, he Meyer. 2004. Yeah. <laughs> so it took him that long. No, he bought the property in in ninety two, right? So and twelve then, years, but that's not when he had the issues. Yeah, right, right. Two, twelve years. Like I think he spent about a year building this thing. Yeah, so. and and the way they described it was he built it at night, so when the so no one knew he was building it. Like the question was, how do you miss a guy building a tank? And they're like, he built it at night, no one was around. Right, and like no one saw him. He but lived I mean, like, there. Like, I assumed it was like a, in a building. So like it's in his she shed. Yeah, he made a he made a she shed for it. Right, right. So you wouldn't see it anyway. He well, I mean, you probably day. see welding and hear the. Zzz, 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 yeah, yeah. And, well, and he works on mufflers and stuff. Like, you know, yeah. why would you suspect? No, he sold that land. I bet this guy's to, building a tank. You know, no, but, I mean, to the truck company. company. And so he, by this time, he believes that God is challenging him to oh, do this. Oh, it's now manifest. Mm. Yes, yeah, so oh. those guys. And and he knew, you know, he had the epiphany to do this while he was in his hot tub after getting pissed off at a town council meeting, and and then. Um, he got this bulldozer, and it barely fit through the door of the shed. But it was just like it was so perfect; it was divine. So he knew right then, like if it didn't yeah. fit, he'd have been like, "Oh, he probably would been like, it's not meant to be, not meant to be." But yeah. it's like it was meant to be. <laughs> so, <laughs> so then, but on the way out, he has to tear it down. Yeah, I was gonna say because right? he, he just added like three feet of yeah. in, of yeah. steel and concrete to right. each side. So on the way out, he just tears the shed down. But he did say once he got in, he had no yeah. intention of getting out. So right. fuck the shed. <laughs> right. <laughs> yep. Uh, on June fourth, two thousand four, He Meyer took to the streets of Granbury. He started his attack uh, on the streets about three p.m. Bursting through the wall of his shed, I knew it. Yep. That kept his his quote unquote kill dozer secret. Kill dozer is what the the media ended up calling it. I'm gonna look this up. Do 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 do. Oh, do, just, do, what, just did, yeah. Also, uh, yeah. There's did pictures. yakety sax start playing? Uh, so <laughs> his first target was <laughs> the, the city concrete. council. City. Nope, the concrete oh. plant. First oh, he flattened because uh, yeah. they're next door. door. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Right next door. So first he flattened the buildings of the concrete plant uh, that, in his mind, started this all. It flattened the buildings. <laughs> <laughs> he then went on to get revenge uh, on the others that had wronged him. How fast is he going? Does it ever say? It's not fast. He's just right. Yeah, like it's a, it's a tank. Cause I can see somebody like, no, stop. <laughs> He's gonna get me. <laughs> so. So police were called to the scene, and they fired an estimated 200 rounds into the vehicle, but that didn't hurt it. 
Um, Obviously. The guy who owns the concrete plant got another tractor to try to tuffle it like they were going to <laughs> They were going to attack the treads to try yeah. to flip it. Footloose 2.0. <laughs> and so he, he goes to do that, and it picks up three wheels of his track because it's so massive, yeah. and it's so heavy because it's got this armor on top of it. Yeah. And so it they tried that a couple of times, and then the second, t- the last time, um, Hemeyer got his 50 cal and shot at the other tractor. Luckily, it hit the the, the shovel part. Yeah. And um, didn't get to go through the, the metal plate of that. But that's when Cody, um, um, the 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 um, concrete plate ma- man, was like, "I'm out. I'm done. <laughs> yep. I'm done. That's it. That I, was I, a I, Barrett, y'all. I, I'm done. I don't even think I'd have went that far, right? <laughs> like, you know, I'm not gonna go. <laughs> no. Do that. But th- but if he's got a Barrett. Which is the 50 cal, yeah. you know, mm. giant gun. I'm not testing my nope. Kevin Bacon. No. <laughs> you can dance your way into the hearts of <laughs> So all I can see, though, because you keep, it's, it's like Granberry or. Granby, yeah. Granberry. Like, all I see is Barney Fife. It's, it's very. Right. It's very. Mayberry ish. It's very Mayberry ish. So now I got, I got like, oh shit, here's a tractor. Let me get my bullet. Like, that's how I see the deputy <laughs> in this thing. He's like trying to dig and, out of his pocket. And. and the closest terms I can think for us, think Wilmer. Ooh, Whoa. dude, you Ooh. let Ooh. Really you know what? You let the tractor have it then, right? Yeah, <laughs> think Wilmer. Think Wilmer. All right, so tractor wins. Yep. So the the police were called onto the scene and fired an estimated 200 rounds into the vehicle, but that didn't hurt it. Dude, that guy was tired at the end of his shift because there was only one cop. Right. <laughs> he's like, <laughs> and it's got he's got a load of no, 200 like, bullets. Bam. No, he's he's going bang bang <laughs> bang 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 bang. bang. Yeah. Hold on. <laughs> There's no magazines. No, it's it's a it's six a shooter. Yeah. It's a revolver. <laughs> bang 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 there, bang bang. There, there was talk, there was a, the, one, one of the one of the one of the I dropped one. One of the deputies was like, I saw it and then I put back my shotgun and got my heavy assault rifle, and went after it. So this 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 town is big enough to have heavy assault rifles. Well, you know they militarized the police back in like. 2001. So yeah. everyone got us. Everyone. Right. They're like, you get an assault rifle. It's Bush's America. You get an assault rifle. <laughs> you get an assault rifle. <laughs> Fuck, you want a tank? We got three of those. This town didn't big enough for a tank. This is yeah. right. Okay. Okay. Uh, Marvin turned his sights on and destroyed the uh, Liberty Savings Bank. Because uh, why not? Mountain Parks Elect- Electric Company. The Maple Street Builders, Gamble's General Store, the Granby, uh, the Granby Town Hall, the Sky High Newspaper Office, and copycat graphics in print. <laughs> but what did they do? <laughs> what did the graphics place do? So copycat, the uh, he had a, he had targeted the Gamble's General Store. That was the last thing he hits. But uh, copycat's next door, and so he to turn around, he oh. ends up hitting copycats. Oh, standard. So right. literally, it got copycatted yeah, it, from, from Gamble's. Gamble's. Exactly. Oh. Exactly. Uh, he also smashed a number of cars, street lamps, road signs, of course. Because because I've seen movies, of course you do. <laughs> <laughs> you can't drive a tank down the street without one half of it going up right, over yeah, the absolutely. cars on the side of the road. Absolutely. Yeah. So the attacks were personal. <laughs> you think? <laughs> At the savings and loan, he targeted the corner office where a woman who sat on the zoning board worked. <laughs> oh man, that's messed up. The town's mayor recently well, died. Look, I, I'm laughing, but I'm hoping like nobody. No. Did. No. Got Mer- run over. Spoiler: Miraculously, no one was injured. Okay, okay, that's so. Good. Now it's funny, yes, right? So right. you still laugh all you. You're allowed to laugh. Shut the, <laughs> the town's mayor recently died, and Marvin destroyed his home where his 82 year old widow lived. Wow! But she made it out. Yeah, she made it. Out. Or was she? She was bingo. napping 30 minutes before. Well, but again, it's like right. He's coming. He's coming. Yeah, but <laughs> I'm leaving, and, and like like <laughs> destroyed the house. Destroyed it. She was a bingo. Maybe she right. was a bingo. Luckily, a group of children had just left the town hall, where where the uh, also held the library, which uh, they where they had their own little story time afternoon. Huh. Um, where they're now telling this story. <laughs> uh, Marvin destroyed many records and, of course, the town archives. Oh, I'm sure he broke some records. <laughs> <laughs> he stopped the dozer outside a propane company and tried to fire a rifle at the tanks, hoping that would cause an explosion. Oh, that's a great idea. And but so, it's not a movie. It's right. Yeah. So he's got like, like, and not not like little propane tanks, like the no, industrial, yeah. Yeah. industrial s- size tanks. Um, Probably more heavily armored than his tank at that no, point. They would have exploded. He was firing incendiary rounds at it. Oh, okay. And so they would have exploded. However, 
his gun point for the 50 cal was at his rear and he had one of those diggers at the rear and so he couldn't get the gun positioned high enough to shoot past the, the yeah. mm-hmm. so he was basically shooting the shit out of his tail the whole time but he couldn't get get enough to you he did shoot uh managed to have a record shot and sh- shoot a transformer which caused p- power outages yeah. that's a good ricochet yeah yeah he had a plan he did have a run uh get a little map <laughs> one two we had at least three. a year a year of yeah, daytime he, to plan yeah, he the, the, the town used uh earth movers to try to stop him so there's big you know, um, stuff that you know they they grate the ground before they yeah. the pave, and that didn't stop it. And the guy, the there's there's video of the guy getting hit, and, and they're like, "Why did it stop?" He goes, "He's in a dozer." <laughs> 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 like I knew this wasn't going to work. <laughs> the rampage ended where he took the kill dozer to the general store, which was owned by one of the town board members. So that was the gambles. Yeah. Uh, the thing by then the the machine was leaking fluid and had black smooth smoke pouring from it. So attrition. Or attrition. Um, what he didn't know and a lot of people didn't know is that Gambles had a basement, and so this is what stops it. He's on the outside of Gambles and just just smashing into the wall, and his tread ends up into mm. the side of the. And then the engine the the engine seizes up and uh, the bulldozer stalls. Uh, the police surround it because they're not ex- they don't know what's going to happen. Right. Yeah. And they're expecting because in in most of these situations it's, it's going to be a shootout. Yeah. At 4:30 p.m. there was a muffled shot heard from the inside. Uh, Marvin Hemeyer took his own life. Mm-hmm. It took hours to make sure the machine was not booby trapped and to get through the armor. Uh, they tried ex- uh, explosives to get it out, which didn't work. And they were like, "Well, he's definitely dead because the sh- the shock should have killed him." Yeah. And so they weren't expecting him alive anyway. And they thought he had killed himself, but you know they weren't a hundred percent sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So they spent the night using uh, torches to actually cut him out, and that's how they. So they didn't get him. This happened at. They started doing that stuff at five p.m. They got him. They got into the killdozer at two a.m. in the morning. Wow. That's how long? That's how much? How much long it took? Uh, it, it took hours to make sure the, the like I said, the machine was uh, bo- wasn't booby trapped and had a uh, get through the armor. It it wasn't until the next morning that Marvin's body was removed. He had shot himself in the um, he put the gun in his mouth and pointed it upwards. Uh, brain? Yeah, right. Was was the word your brain was looking for? Brain? Yeah, I was looking for brain. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, um, Marvin's body was removed inside. They found the three rifles, three handguns, and enough food and water to last a week. Wow, but the- still no shitter. <laughs> <laughs> He's got something against it, man. Um, that dude's a camel. <laughs> that dude's a camel. He's just, I'm going to hold it in. The town's damage totaled $5 million, with $2 million of it belonging to the concrete plant. Wow. Uh, yeah, sad side note, they were only insured for $700,000. Oh. oh. Oh, so... One point two. So million. if they had sold to him or bought for a million, they would have actually made out better. Right. Yep. <laughs> if they uh, bought his plot for uh, a million. Uh, searching Marvin's home, they found a list of 107 people he thought had wronged him. Oh God. Uh, the the Dochefs, the owners of the concrete plant, were at the top of the list, but also judges, po- politicians, newspaper editors, and anyone else involved in the case. Spider Man. He was. P- <laughs> He was pissed off the newspaper editor because the the newspaper the guy who ran the newspaper was like, "Yeah, I'll do a story about you, and you can buy some ads." You have a businessman. You've you've seen that happen. It happens all the time, and uh, he could the newspaper guy could never catch up with Hemeyer to do the story because he was always out and about. And the mall mob, shop was never opened. You know, just it was just fun money, and so he was yeah. mad that oh they're giving me a bad name. They won't cover me because because I'm the outsider and this is a good old boys thing. And so, so that's why he was mad at the newspaper. Afterwards, the bulldozer was dismantled, uh, and the scrap was sent to different salvage yards to prevent souvenir hunters. Hmm. Some townsfolk thought it should be kept and put into a museum <laughs> because tourism it belongs <laughs> in a museum. Because we now are down until, five mil. Yeah, until, hold on, until someone like is the idea to resurrect the town. <laughs> right. Right. Um, I think I can fix that. Just take out the firing pin or some whatever. angry mechanic. Yeah. <laughs> I know what's wrong with that thing. The janitor of the museum who's been, who's been looked down upon the last 40 years of him working there and mopping the floor. He's not a good old boy. He's like, I can go get a bag full of diesel. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> Round two, fight. It also came to light that the Colorado's governor at the time 
had looked into either having the National Guard use Apache attack helicopters or a two-man fire team equipped with anti-tank missiles to stop the machine. These measures were dismissed because of the potential uh, for a missile strike in the heart of Grand Prairie, Colorado. Wow. They're like, that could be too much collateral damage. What time of year was that, did uh, you say? Uh, it is uh, June. June, okay. June 4th. So, so the reason I was... as hell in that tank. Well, the, uh, well that... The, the re- the air conditioned air fans. The reason I was asking, and though, video is monitors. you yep. said he was only 50 miles outside the Rocky National Park. Right. Well, if it's winter and they shoot those missiles, you're having angel- avalanches in those right. mountains, mm-hmm. right? Like, that's loud enough. I think, I don't know, 50 miles might be a little far enough away, but yeah, that's a danger you would have to think of if it's December. So Marvin Heemeyer sent three audio tapes to his brother in South Dakota before the attacks, and, of course, his brother turns it over to the FBI. Uh, in the On the audio tapes, he tried to explain the motivation, saying, God built me for this job. That God had planned him not to marry or have a family so he could be in position to carry out the attack. It was his duty. God asked him to do this. It's a cross that he was going to carry, and he was going to carry it in God's name. He was willing to be reasonable until he had to be unreasonable. Sometimes reasonable men must do unreasonable things. So God said, go to Mayberry and mess it up. (laughs) <laughs> Apparently. Not Colorado City, right. not Denver, not Aspen, not where anybody with any influence is. Yeah. What? Granberry. Granberry. Yep. Yep. Granberry. Population 2000. <laughs> God says, fuck it up. God, <laughs> hey, look, God works in mysterious ways. Man. Yeah, you I never know. It. I am not here to say that that's not These are true. Not <laughs> I'm here to say that that's not likely. <laughs> That is the story of Marvin uh, Haymeyer. Uh, Haymeyer. Uh, the sources for this is the Terran Granberry uh, Granby by Tom Bagzin, uh, or Bagazarian. That's his name. Uh, from and I love this one. This is from a magazine called The Concrete Producer. Yeah. <laughs> There's a concrete producing magazine from April 12, uh, 14th, 2016. Um, Tis predated zoning f- uh, fight land deal issue uh, took places before town squabbles by Patrick Brower. Uh, for Sky High News, the news that was yes. crushed yeah. uh, mm-hmm. in November 2017. Aren't they on every plane now? Yep. <laughs> the Strange Story of Killdozer and the Man Behind It by John Don- uh, uh, Donanan for How It Stucks. Com, How It stu- How Stuff Works. Com, and the story of Marvin Heemeyer Revenge and His Killdozing by John uh, Karoski, March 2008. For all things that's interesting, and most importantly, there is a fabulous documentary on Netflix called Tread that I wish everyone to watch. 